What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to uh, solve some annoying graphics issues in Revit, and mainly what we're going to be doing uh, is resizing uh, elements uh, such as sections, uh, level heads, and uh, grid heads. So, you know, those little graphics for sections, grids, and levels, you can actually modify them. Uh, but it is a little bit difficult, it's not kind of straightforward, so I want to show you the whole uh, kind of process for modifying those, because I do get that question quite a lot, and it's not something that's, well, commonly known. So that's going to be the topic of today's video. Uh, now before we jump into Revit, I would just like to take a moment to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. Uh, I'm going to link it up uh, just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. There you can find all of my Revit courses. I've got over 130 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. Also there you can find some of my customized ready-to-go Revit templates. You can find some high-quality Revit families and also there is a plugin that you might find interesting. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here is an apartment that I've been working on, an apartment project, and I'm just going to be using this as reference and uh, or as a project. So uh, let's first start with the simplest one, and that's going to be the grid. So I'm just going to go here to on the architecture tab, go to the datum panel and find the grid tool. And let's just place one grid over here. Uh, so this is orange. Um, so that's a kind of a simple modification here. You can go and turn this into orange. That's basically what they did. Uh, and this is part of my uh, architecture design template. Uh, so again, as I said, that's something that's available on my website. So you can find it up in the cards above. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's first modify this. So let's say you want to make this smaller. Depending on the scale, you might find this a bit too large, especially if I go here from 1 to 50 to 1 to 100. You will see that this starts to get really large and you might not want that. So let's see how can we make it smaller. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's just add something kind of as a measuring stick here just so we know the original size. So if I go and let's place a simple wall here. So I'm just going to grab an interior wall and let's place one here, one here. So just so we can have something there as a model element, just kind of that gives us the size reference of this thing. Okay, so as I said, the grid is the easiest one to modify because you just have to uh, select the grid and then you'll see if you go here into edit type uh, that it's actually using a family for this grid symbol. So as you can see here, symbol, and then it's called the M grid head circle. So you just have to modify this family. Now you don't have to edit the family and open it up and so on. There's just one parameter for that family that you can modify. Now you cannot do it here uh, when you select the grid, but what you can do is go to your project browser, scroll all the way down and find families. Now, once you find families, you can expand that. And then the first one here is annotation symbols. And then you can expand that. And here you can search for, uh, let's see the grid, uh, perhaps it was up here. So it can be, okay, here we go. So that's the one with the circle and then you can expand it and then here's the type of that. So the, the this is the family, this is the type. So if you double click on the type, you can actually uh, adjust the radius. So here, if I just come in here, can I make this smaller? Okay, I can. So if instead of 65, I make it 0.45 and then click OK, as you can see, that's going to become smaller. So it's a simple and straightforward adjustment. Okay, now let's move to levels. So for levels, uh, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. So let's open up that section. Now you may have noticed that the section is gone. It was here and now it's gone. Uh, well, that's because some sometimes sections have an adjustment here. Uh, so when I select the section, I've dropped it down to one to 50 scale and then the section is there. So the reason for that, why it's there at 1 to 50 and it's not there at 1 to 100 is because, let's go back here, select the section. Uh, here, when you select the section, you have this option or parameter called hide at scales 
coarser than and then you have the scale so I like to have this at at least 200 and it's really up to you so I'm just going to set it at that and now if we go back to 1 to 100 it's going to be larger so we're going to be leaving the scale for the last one let's just open up our the, the section head for the last one so let's just open up the section here and let's now play around with this symbol here because I really hate it and it's not the correct symbol that we use in my country uh, or in my region so how do you actually replace this uh, well again if you select the level uh, and you go here into edit type what you'll see here is that it's using a symbol for that which is M level head circle and you have the option of a circle and uh, no bubble uh, now you can resize the circle and that's pretty straightforward but I don't want to do that I want to do something way more interesting and I want to replace it with a different family now luckily with Revit we do get different families they just they're just not loaded in so let's load in a different uh, family so I'm going to go here to the insert tab and then I'm going to go to load family uh, which is going to open up our uh, just the family library so I'm using the US metric one uh, and then you just go here to annotations and what you'll see here is that here we have M level head and then you have multiple options so we have the circle and no bubble which are the ones that we already have but we also have triangle and triangle spot so I'm going to hold my control key and select both of these and then I'm just going to open them up which means that they are now loaded into the project so now I can go and select my level uh, here I can go into edit type and then here I can, ex oops, not that, here, I can expand the menu and now as you can see we have additional options. So if I select the triangle and then hit apply, it's going to look like this, which in my opinion looks a lot better, but in the end I really prefer the triangle spot and if I hit apply that's going to look like this. Uh, so that's another option that we have. Uh, so I'm just going to click uh, OK here. Uh, now for this you can turn it on on both sides so for example we can have one here and then one here. Uh, now the problem is uh, this is not the correct representation that I want and that, that they have in my country. It's closer to it but it's not exactly that. Uh, and again still it works so if you open this up it's going to open up that level. So let's go back to the section and let's modify this even further. So how can we make a additional modifications to this well we can again find it here in the project browser so if I just collapse this so that's going to be level head triangle spot uh, now if you want to edit this family so not just adjust the parameters as we did like this I don't want to just adjust the parameters I want to edit the family uh, so you don't click on the type you actually leave it you can leave it just like this non expanded right click and then go to edit which is going to open up that family as you can see and now you can edit the family now one thing that they like to do here is just go to the uh, view tab open up the VG graphics and then go to annotation categories and turn on the reference planes just because it's going to make it a bit simpler to see what's going on uh, and then here the first step is I want to get rid of this filled region because I just like to have a gap there that's the first one and then the second one I want to select this whole thing and then move it off to the side uh, as you can see here in the section uh, the level line is going to go all the way here to the center well I want the level line the level line to shoot past that and kind of be aligned here at the edge so we can achieve that by selecting the whole thing uh, like this select the uh, these um, how, how do we call these uh, labels yeah labels <laughs> yeah so select the labels select the line work and uh, then you just go here to move and then you move it from here to here now Revit is going to go crazy it's going to say we have some constraints so okay remove the constraints if you uh, if you have a problem with that I don't mind and then let's just adjust it like so and then connect this here and there we go so once this is fixed I can now load it back into the project override this and as you can see it's going to look like that so it's just going to be the other way around and I actually prefer this 
uh, presentation and this is actually what uh, what's kind of required in my country for these uh, symbols for the levels and then it's still clickable so you can still double click that and it's going to open up that level so that's how you modify these and then for the last one uh, the most difficult one and that's going to be the section one because it's well it's so massive so how do you modify the section heads? Uh, well, sections have two heads. So it has this one and it has this one. I'm just going to be showing you how to modify this one because it's more complicated and then the same approach applies here. So if I select the section and go into edit type, what you'll notice is that here we have the section tag. Uh, and uh, what you'll see here is that we have actually two families. So we have the section head filled and then we have the section tail filled. And there's a comma in between the, this. So this means that this is actually two families. If I click on this little button, it's going to open up another type properties menu. And this is that actual family. And then here we have the section head and the section tail. So this is this family and then this is this family. Uh, and now uh, let's make the modifications. So first I'm just going to duplicate this type. So just duplicate and then let's call it dash new. Okay. Uh, and now I'm just going to OK out of this menu and I'm not going to make any changes there. So the next step is going to be to find this uh, section head here. Uh, I want to find it here in the project browser. So I'm going to click on the section head field. Uh, now I'm not going to again expand this and use this. I'm just going to right click and then go to edit and that's going to open up that family. And here we go. This is the family. So now the next step is going to be uh, to view the reference planes because those tells, uh, tell us the relationship between this uh, section head and the lines. So the lines, uh, the section line that comes to the section head. So you just go back here uh, and you go to the view menu, you go to visibility graphics and on the annotation categories, you just turn on the reference planes hit apply okay so the vertical reference planes are telling you up to which point the the section line is going to go basically okay so now let's make this smaller so I'm just going to reduce this to four millimeters and then this one again to four millimeters now I'm not going to adjust this yet uh, now here this text is now a bit too large so this number one here I think it's going to work if we just bring it a bit lower it works perfectly fine but this is way too large so let's edit this label by going to edit type duplicate and let's call this one uh, I don't know let's go with 1.5 okay and then let's just change this to 1.5 and now it's smaller and now it fits and then we can just bring it up okay so once we have this in place uh, now it's time to adjust these here filled regions so just because of the the way that this is constructed this is actually four different uh, filled regions that we have here now if we want to scale these filled regions and let's say I want to select all of them and then scale them at once uh, what you'll notice is that well if I go to the scale tool well, I cannot do that. Uh, now, what I can do is select the individual one and then again, well, the scale tool doesn't work. Well, the reason for that is when you have these sketched elements with a sketched boundary, you cannot scale them like this. What you can do is go to edit sketch and then you can select all of the elements and then you can scale them. So select the boundary basically. So I, I go here to scale. Uh, I can then click in the center, go here, bring it down, hit finish. There we go, super easy. Select this one, again, edit sketch, scale, enter, and then just bring it down like that. Hit finish. And then I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of these. So just like from here to here, perfect. And then the last one is this one here, edit, scale, you can select it and this is it okay perfect uh, and then we're just left with this big triangle so let's select that hold the control key select this line and this line and now we just want to scale that so that's going to be easy to scale so from here to here perfect uh, and then you also want to modify these lines so you want to make sure that they go up to the bubble because that's basically up to the the, the line where this is going to be uh, going to okay and we want to make this smaller and this as well 
Okay, so you basically select the reference plane and I think we should be able to just move it in like so. Perfect. And then this one as well. Okay, there we go. So now we have this new section head that we have created. Uh, now it might make sense to save that family. So let's go and I'm just going to save it on my desktop section filled dash new. Okay, so once I have this saved, uh, I can then load it into the project, uh, project three. Okay, and then I'm back here in the project and nothing has changed here. And again, because we're now going to be making this change, uh, let's add some walls. So I'm just going to grab this wall here and then let's just add those walls like so. And then uh, let's just adjust them to be at the edges so we can see if we're making a difference. Okay, so now we can again select the section. Uh, we can go here into edit type and then we can go to section tag, it's this, uh, open that up, and now for this one, we can just find the section head and select our new one. Click OK, click Apply, OK, and as you can see now, it's smaller, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. We wanted to adjust uh, the section head, and we did, and it's a lot smaller, and then you can just repeat the same process uh, for the tail. Uh, but that's going to allow you to, well, make some modifications and make all of these uh, elements that maybe have seemed like you cannot edit them at all. Well, you can actually edit them and this is exactly how you do it. Uh, now, if you want to get this uh, project file, this apartment that I'm working on, you can find it on my Patreon page, which I'm going to include the link to just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. On my Patreon page, you can find all of my Revit project files. I have over 400 project files there so far. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.